Hey guys, it's Karxel. In this video, I'll teach you the basics of Rust. I wanted it to be 10 minutes or less, but realized this was almost impossible, so I've done it in about 12. Just a heads up, I'm not here to babysit you and hold your hand. I'm going to assume you know the basics of shooters like control to crouch, right click to aim, left click to shoot, etc, etc. In the server list, you have three categories, official, community, and modded. I recommend going onto a deathmatch or aim train server like UKN or Operation War Games in the modded list to get a feeling of the game like weapons, movement, key binds, etc. Once you feel comfortable with the bow and know how some of the other guns work, head back to the server list. I like the game how it's meant to be played originally, which is also known as vanilla. Some players with less time on their hands though, like playing on slightly modded servers that have increased gather rates such as 2 times or 3 times, for example. Choosing a server entirely depends on you. The higher the population, the more action, and the higher the chances of dying and losing what you've gathered. Too low population can lead to boring gameplay, so choose something that you think you'd be comfortable with. Once you've chosen your server, it's time to get started. You spawn on the beach with a rock which is your early game gathering tool and can be used to attack other players. You also spawn with a torch which helps seeing you in dark areas and at night. You can always check the map by pressing G. This will tell you where you currently are on the map. There are multiple spawning areas on a single map. Most beaches can be spawned at. You can always press F1 and type K-I-L-L -L and press enter to kill your character and respawn somewhere else. You'll want to decide where you want to head to start gathering. You'll also want to look at your map to decide where you want to build. Certain areas and biomes have more or less kinds of resources. There are also monuments on the map. These special buildings and areas hold barrels and crates that have components. Components are the key ingredients to crafting in the game, but you don't need them to build your base early on. Monuments are split into tiers 1, 2, and 3. 1 being considered the least rewarding and also the least dangerous, up to 3 being the most rewarding but the most dangerous like the launch site that is guarded by Bradley APC and military tunnels which is guarded by multiple well-geared scientists. Some of the lower tier monuments are the harbor, lighthouse, gas station, and supermarket. It may be useful to live near them as they hold crates with valuable items such as better gathering tools and even firearms like revolver and semi-automatic rifle. Just beware that many other players roam these monuments in search of components and items. With all that being said, let's get going and build our first base, while gathering and learning about the essential resources of Rust. Gather wood by hitting trees with your rock, hatchet, axe, or chainsaw. Gather stone, sulfur, or metal nodes with your rock, Pickaxes or a jackhammer. While on the hunt for wood and stone, you will encounter other resources on the way such as cloth or animals. Cloth is essential early game as it is used to craft your first weapon, the bow. After crafting some arrows, you can use your bow to hunt down animals to gather more cloth, leather, raw meat, and animal fat. Animal fat can be turned into low grade fuel, and low grade fuel is needed to craft your first furnace. Now that you've gathered up enough wood, stone, and other resources, you feel ready to build a base. You're probably also craving to get all that loot to a safe spot, 
But before we get into actually building your first base, here's a few quick tips that will help you survive in the harsh world of Rust. Crafting. Pressing tab brings up the quick craft menu, which are items that are currently craftable with materials you have available in your inventory. This doesn't always show the items that you want though. You can search for items by pressing Q. You can also check which items you've learned through this menu. Bags. When you get a bit of cloth, craft bags and lay them in areas that you'd like to respawn at. Sometimes you'll find a good farming spot, and in case you die before getting a base down, it can be wise to set down a bag or two to respawn at your new favorite spot. Food. Once you've hunted a few animals, you might have noticed you have gotten food from them. Food is a good way to restore health. If you don't eat or drink, you'll eventually starve, dehydrate, and die. You can also find pumpkins and corn near rivers. Make sure to drink if you're at a river. Lastly, you can harvest cacti in the desert or pick mushroom in forest areas. You cannot drink from the ocean, it's salt water. Craft a bone knife. Again, once you've harvested an animal or two, it may be wise to craft yourself a bone knife. The gather rate is higher, thus not wasting any precious resources by gathering them with a stone hatchet. Clothing. If you got some extra cloth or leather, you can make some clothes that will keep you warm and will protect you from radiation that a lot of monuments have. Got some rope and wood? Craft wood and armor. It offers extra protection against projectiles, animals, and radiation. Always keep scraps. Scraps are one of the most important resources in Rust. It may seem like their use is very early on, but you'll quickly find out how important they are. Components are important too. Keep what you can, but concentrate on getting that base down. You can always find a recycler and recycle all the components you found. This will recycle everything into scraps, metal fragments, and high quality metal. Now let's jump into building that base. This is going to be a very, very inexpensive and easy to build base. If you'd like something more secure or would like to know more about building, there are hundreds of tutorials out there. There are also creative servers that you can hop on and practice building, so feel free to do that also. First, you'll need a building plan, a hammer, a tool cupboard, a wooden door, and a key lock. If making this base out of wood only, you'll need around 5,000 wood. To make this base out of stone, you'll need around 3,000 wood and 4,000 stone total. The building plan is used to make the blueprint of your base. It's always made of twig. You want to upgrade this immediately, as twig can be destroyed in a mere few hits. Select the building plan, hold right click to select the appropriate building part, and click on it. Left click to build. Next we use the hammer to upgrade. Select the hammer and get close to a building part you'd like to upgrade. It will light up blue. Hold right click and another wheel similar to the building plan will pop up asking you which material you'd like to upgrade with. Here, we're going to upgrade with stone. Left click it and it will upgrade that part. If you run out of stone, don't worry. Upgrade the rest to wood for now. From worst to best, you have twig, wood, stone, metal, and high quality metal. Select the wooden door and place it so the doorknob is on the right, like this. When it opens, it will block the second doorway, which will stop any door camping players from coming in if you're caught killed with the door open. Then place the key lock, hold E on it to lock it. Don't forget this. Anyone can come to your lock and claim it if it's unlocked. If you're playing with teammates, you will need to open and close the door for them until you get a code lock which needs metal to be crafted. Next, we place the tool cupboard. The tool cupboard is something simple yet quite special. Placing a tool cupboard puts a large eight foundation radius around it. Any player who is not authorized on this cupboard cannot build near it. This keeps other players from building around your base. So having a cupboard is a necessity. Once you place it, press E on it to authorize and then press E again to access your cupboard. The cupboard also holds something called an upkeep. Essentially, your base needs resources to stop from decaying. Your cupboard will tell you how much resources are needed to keep your base up for the next 24 hours. The bigger the base, the more resources it will need. If it runs out of resources, your base will start decaying on its own. Within hours, walls of your base will already have crumbled. 
do not ever let players near your cupboard. If an enemy player gets access to it, you can say farewell to your base and most likely your loot as well. There's so much more to cupboards, but let's keep this basic for the sake of this video. You can place a furnace down in your new home and place wood in it to cook your metal and sulfur ore. Don't forget to place another bag. And a small box. Lastly, we'll quickly go over scraps. Scraps are used mainly for two things. There's a couple other uses, but we'll save that for maybe another video. The first we'll talk about are workbenches. Workbenches are used to craft items of higher tier. Some require a tier 1 workbench, other items such as the assault rifle or rocket launcher require a tier 3. Gather up some scraps and metal to make yourself a workbench. Some items are locked and cannot be crafted immediately. They must be learned. For example, a metal hatchet. You found a metal hatchet, but if you lose it, you can't craft another one. This is where the research table comes in. Most items you find in Rust can be learned in exchange of some scraps. So if you found something that is locked in the crafting menu, make sure you craft yourself a research table and learn those items. All right, that's it. I hope that wasn't too hard to follow. If this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to be notified when I release more videos and let me know in the comments if you'd like more tutorial videos like this. And hey, I also stream on Twitch full time. If you'd like to come hang out, my link is in the description below. See you in the next one. Peace.